Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. Tonight we're going to take a look at the Grim Pack. This comes out tomorrow. As you guys know, sadly, uh, my mom passed away last weekend. So I am a little behind schedule on this. We got access to it a couple days ago, but this is the first chance I've gotten to really sit down and look at it. Um, so we will take a look at this stuff, and there's a lot of potato, potato, potato equipment. Uh, I don't know what some of this does. We're going to actually go out into the field, so I'm going to do my best to describe what I think it does, and then we'll go take it out and put it to practice. We have some very small, low-horsepower uh, seeders for potatoes. That's the first thing that's available here. Small capacity, though. You're going to be pulling these things over a lot and refilling them. Uh, this is the very small one. It requires, I think, like 62 horsepower or something like that. So it's really low horsepower and very affordable. So if you want to get into potatoes, and let's say you're doing like a Polish map where you're using like a little 70 or 80 horsepower Ursus tractor, you could pull it with this. Now, you're probably going to need a counterweight on the front, but it'll work. So you can actually do potatoes without having a big setup. This is, what, this is kind of a neat pack that they've given us. The second device here, we have a pair of seeders. I don't know, and I'm going to have to test this one out. This is the one thing I really don't know. They've given it to us. You can buy it either with this device on the back or without it. The, what these do, I believe, is they hill the mound around the potato, These, this device here. Uh, and if not, you just kind of rely on the wheels to do the hilling, but this one probably makes it like a nicer, more cut hill. In the game, honestly, I don't think you're going to see a difference between this and this. In real life, this would make a nicer hill. But I think in the game, just the way the physics work in this game, it's not going to make a difference. Or the graphics and the non-3D terrain work, <laughs> you're not going to see a difference. Um, here we have, and once again, I believe, and I'm sorry for console users, it doesn't sound like this is coming out for console, at least not yet. Uh, it's being released for PC and Mac users only at this point. I don't think it said anything about consoles on their website. So I also believe it says that if you own the premium edition or the season pass, you'll get it for free. So um, hang on a second. So the language on their website is very confusing about this, and I'm not sure, and I wish I could direct you and tell you exactly what it's going to be. The language says that it is going to be available on PC and Mac on January 26th. That's what it says. It doesn't say anything about consoles. It then goes on to say that if you have the Season Pass or Premium Edition, which I believe those are both console editions, that you'll have that it's going to be uh, free. So I, I don't know how much this is going to cost. If it's free for everybody, what they haven't really made very clear how they're going to release this or what they're doing it's kind of confusing but anyway this is it is what it is we're going to at least look at the pack and you know and take a look and see what it does these are uh oh hold on one second my wife may have some information so i'll be right back okay so the confusing thing and once again on their website they're saying it's going to be 4.99 so that must be if you're not a season pass holder i was not aware that you could buy a season pass for the pc though so it it says console and PC, or on PC and Mac, I'm sorry, on their website, and then it says it's $4.99. So once again, we have information on Steam saying that it might be on console, and it's just kind of convoluted. So I don't know right now, but it looks like it's going to be 5 bucks. Uh, it sounds like it's free to people that have the premium and the season pass, whatever those are. So uh, I don't know yet. But anyway, this is a potato puller. You'd have to get a topper first. Uh, you could probably run a tractor with a topper on the front and then pull this behind. And what it does is it windrows the potatoes. So you're going to have a nice row of potatoes after here to pick up later. And we'll, how do we pick those up? Well, we'll get to that. Uh, but this device basically just pulls them out of the ground. You have to cut them first, though. Don't forget, you need to top them. So you're going to put a topper on the front of the tractor or run the whole field with a topper and then come back and grab this and pull the potatoes out. Once again, though, this allows you to use a 60-horsepower-ish tractor. So it's designed for the straw, the small tractor in mind. Here we have the ex almost exact same device. requires a couple more horsepower. You can see there's a cable hanging off the front, and those cables power and control this. So this one, instead of dropping it directly behind, you can either buy this with a left-dropping uh, conveyor or a right dropping conveyor it does the exact same thing but instead of leaving it directly behind you it puts it to the side i don't know why you'd want to do that 
versus this, unless this makes a narrower wind row that's easier to pick up. But I don't really see. I, I don't know why you want to just use this. It's cheaper. I guess some farmers need that option. Uh, all right, so <laughs> then here we have a heavier one. This one, um, I don't believe you need a topper first. Let's look at the menu real quick because I want to make sure I'm not getting this wrong. There's a, This one had something different to it. Uh, I went right past Grimmy. So let's get there. Gold, Hoffer, Gessner, where did... There it is. Okay, so we have, this is the topper I'm talking about. That already is included in the game. But I think this one, the CDW, w, the WR200 CDW, does not require a halm, or halm cutter before using this machine. So with this one, it's a little bit more expensive and requires much more horsepower. Instead of looking at 72 and 68 horsepower, respectively, it requires 150. So the big difference is you're going to need a big tractor to run this, but you don't need to run the cutter first. So this saves you some time, and it drops the potatoes off in a nice, neat windrow in the back. Now, this guy's available with or without a cover. Um, it is um, a little bit different. It looks like a potato harvester, doesn't it? But it's not. All this does is pick the potatoes up off the field. That's what this is for. So once you use this guy or these two guys, you run behind with one of these. And unfortunately, they're kind of expensive. Still doesn't require much horsepower. I think it's just, let's look at the horsepower mod. It was like 60 or 70 again. Oh, no, I was wrong. 110. So you need a bit of a bigger tractor. And this is expensive. $150,000. But you got to get the potatoes up off the field somehow. So you can easily either, either, you can either use a front loader. <laughs> Or uh, like a telehandler to pick the potatoes up and hand load them with a shovel or a bucket into one of these. Or you can spend $150,000, get this really cool device, and just drive along and pick the potatoes up and load them into the machine. This holds, I think, 65,000 liters of potatoes. And then you take it with a, it has a extendable pipe. We'll put it into use so you can see it. Uh, this extends out, and it'll dump into one of these nice tippers that come with the game. They're available with, uh, with or without covers. They can either be chosen in white or red. They have narrow and wide tires, Michelin and Trelleborg. So we have several different options available. These are specifically designed to haul potatoes. And it has a neat little feature on the back. The potatoes come out of a conveyor. You have a little conveyor unit on the back of the tipper. And what happens here is these can dump out, and you can actually just back right up to this handy-dandy lizard hopper that they provided with us that has a belt, and that belt will carry it up and to wherever you want the potatoes to go. I would recommend using a belt system like the ones that are included in the game. Uh, you have, you know, all of these devices used to pick up potatoes. But instead of using this guy, we have a new device, and I'm going to show you this. This is cool. You put this on the front of your belt. And the potatoes that get piled, you can scoop them up. You, you, you ride on this on the front, and you can actually drive it back and forth into the potato pile. And this will scoop them up and drop them onto another conveyor that's hooked to this. So you can move it back and forth, and it's a very convenient way to scoop your potatoes up. I would say you probably want to get a manufacturing line going. You're going to back up with your tipper to this, put it onto one of those belts, and then have it dump into this. And what this is is this device is made for potato pallets. It's pretty cool. It's dual-sided. So what happens is, and we'll put these into use again so you can see them, the potatoes will jump, will, you'll dump them on top, and they'll go either left or right. They'll go to the left, and they'll fill up a pallet, uh, and then they'll go to the right and fill up a pallet. While the one on the right is filling up, you can use a fork loader or a one of the, like the little uh, Manitou... Uh, what do you call that, uh, forklift to pick up the pallets and move them off while the other one's filling up and then come back and move the other one off so you can constantly be moving potatoes in pallets off and storing them off to the side. So it makes it storage a, a much easier thing instead of just having loose potatoes. When you're ready to sell them, you can put them in pallets. You don't have to do that. You can also just, you know, the game kind of doesn't give you different prices. I wish 
they would have some sort of pricing system where they gave you like palletized potatoes would be worth more because obviously you've processed them and you're delivering them in a, in a sellable pallet. You know what I mean? So you think that those would be worth more, and in real life they probably are. But in this case, you know, it doesn't really make a difference. But this is a neat device if you want to kind of play role play and make pallets with your potatoes. They hold 1750 uh, liters of potatoes on each pallet. And then you take those and load them onto a back of a truck. Uh, I do have some cool semi trucks that you can put pallets into, uh, and so you you know fork load them onto the, the semi truck and then drive your semi truck off to the sell point and make it a little bit more of a realistic operation. Um, pretty neat stuff. So, uh, what else do we have? Well, um, we're gonna scoot around back here once again. We have the belt, the dump that we you're gonna use to dump the trailers into. They've also given, last but not least, a series of specifically designed for potatoes uh, weeders. These weeders are designed to uh, go between the rows of potatoes and weed out weeds while leaving the potatoes intact. We have a really wide one and then two smaller ones um, for farms of all sizes. So I think one of the neat things that this pack adds, once again, is that it lets us do potatoes on a smaller scale than we did before. You can definitely use, and honestly, how many potatoes do you really want to do, right? So if you do a giant field of potatoes, you're going to be hours and hours and hours harvesting them. And at that point, you're going to want one of the big, like, $500,000 Grimmy harvesters. But if you're doing a small farm and you want some potatoes for your pigs or whatever, this gives you a little bit more, unfortunately, this thing's still expensive, but, you know, the other thing you could do is you could just use the windrowers and then use a front loader, dump them in here, and make pallets to store your, your potatoes. That would be another thing you could do. So there's all kinds of role play stuff here, and that's what I like. Once again, when we look at the DLCs, we're looking for a complete kit. And I think in this case, they've done a good job giving it to us. Some All of this stuff is already in the game. Yes, I know it's not like a groundbreaking new technology, uh, except for the pallet machine. You couldn't palletize potatoes before. That, that's, that is new. Uh, but there's, you know, this stuff is going to help you role play, especially if you like doing the potatoes, if you're, you know, doing that kind of, like, or, ha or have a pig farm and you want to have potatoes for your pigs stored. Uh, this gives you a, a much lower horsepower requirement option to do that. Uh, and it can also be fairly cheap because most of these devices here for planting and, and harvesting are under... $20,000. So you could buy, let's say, for example, you could buy this and this and then just use a telehandler to scoop potatoes uh, off the field and into this and then box them up. Or you could even just scoop them off the field and put them in a tipper and feed them to your pigs that way. And you, you, you're looking at 20, if you skip the whole thing and just use your tipper, you could skip, you know, 20,000 bucks you can make potatoes. Whereas if we look in the sales, and once again, I'm just trying to give you some ideas here. Um, where's our potatoes? There it is. Uh, right. So <laughs> the cheapest one was $21,000 and requires 150 horsepower. Well, you may have a little tiny tractor. So now you can get it for $10,000, half the price. Now it's going to take you a while to plant your field, but you don't have to plant a very big field to get a lot of potatoes. Or you can use this one that fertilizes. That's a little closer to the same price. But the, the big one that we had here doesn't fertilize. So you could do still cheaper and fertilize in one pass. And use a 60 horsepower tractor instead of a 150 horsepower tractor. That's what I'm getting at. Once again, to harvest it, you only need $11,000 if you want the cheapest thing. And that only requires 70 horsepower. So you could do a whole potato plant and harvest... You know, you still have to buy the mo no matter what you do, you're gonna have to buy a topper. So, the topper is required for all of these devices, but uh, but you could do a full harvest for you know the topper plus these two devices. So you can make potatoes for twenty thousand bucks, and that's in game really cheap. So, oh wait, no, I'm sorry, and this I marked that wrong. I was looking at this one saying that it was one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I apologize. I looked at the wrong thing. Once again, it looks just like the harvester, doesn't it? That's the harvester. That's why that's $150,000. I, 
I was correct. This one only requires 90 horsepower, and it's only 80, only, quote, unquote, the great deal of $88,000. So we'll go back to that again. I apologize. I got that wrong. This is only $88,000, and it is, uh, it's only a 90 horsepower requirement. So you could use a fairly small tractor like my little Stara 105 could do a whole potato harvest easily. Without having to, without me having to buy a bunch of different tractors and heavy equipment to do that, and the star has already got the weight on the front, so you didn't have to buy a weight. Um, so once again, you could do that, that. You know, if you want to add a little bit more, you have more money to spend, you could do this. But if not, you could just dump them on the field and scoop them up into a track. You know, uh, if you guys remember back when uh, Mr. Micah, I think it was Mr. Micah and Nick Carpenter Carp, we had a farm where we were doing that, and we were using one of these, but it was a really crappy mod. Um, but we were using one of these potato harvesters, and we were just scooping them up and using a telehandler to put them into a trailer. So there is that. Um, so anyway, I think this adds a nice dimension to the game that we did not have before. And uh, once again, it is all equipment that we have we could use in game. It's not anything revolutionary aside from this, which makes potato pallets. But... It's cool stuff, and I think at four ninety nine, it's really not a bad deal. They keep adding some. We keep getting some really cool equipment. Uh, this would actually probably make me be interested in getting into small potato farming, uh, because once again, it's a lot less effort than doing a giant field. You can just plant a little strip of potatoes, and then harvest them and get potatoes for your animals or sell them. But it's it's uh it has they have, we have a whole process now, so this is really cool. All right, guys, so we're going to go head out to the field here in a minute and uh, put some of these to use and just so you guys can see how they work and what you need to do to, to work them. So I'll be right back. All right, so just to prove a point, we're going to fill these up using my seed bags here. You can also use potatoes, obviously. Potatoes go back into it. Once you've grown a bunch of potatoes, you can replant your field using potatoes that you've harvested. So if you didn't know that, now you know. Uh, we're going to head down to the field. Um, I haven't bought it yet, but I'm going to head down there. I'll be right back. My wife would like me to tell everybody how much amazing wife I have. She's laughing. I appreciate my wife's help today. As you know, she is awesome, and she got me the information I needed about the pack being $5. Uh, theoretically... This is not working. So I got to, I'm trying to figure out how to turn the planter on. It should just turn on. It doesn't have an on switch. I'm like doing the on button and it's not coming on. So let's see. Him. I think we have to plow this first. It says it goes on to plowed ground, so we must have to plow first. Which is interesting that they did that. But you're supposed to plow after each usage anyway. So I'm interested to find out. We'll we'll try to plant again at the end and see if it won't plant, will or won't plant if there's uh, leftover potato on the field. Like you know when you when you do the potato field, it leaves like green stuff on there. I'm wondering if we can't plant and that we have to plow every time. Which that's kind of cool actually because in real life you would do that. So uh, I'm gonna get down there and I'm gonna plow a spot out and we'll try it. So I'll be right back. Okay, we have used a culty plow on the ground so that should do it so now we should be able to plant these potatoes we'll put that down on the ground i guess you don't have to turn this on it's driven by gears it looks like oh there we go and the potatoes are easily going down on the field and it makes nice neat rows like it should but that's how it works and you can see here uh Our other tractor doing his work here. Oh, we're slipping there a little bit. So that horsepower requirement, yeah, you're going to be working. You, I would say probably, I usually try to, when something says it needs a certain amount of horsepower, especially when it comes to, like, potatoes or uh, these drag devices, I usually try to double the horsepower that they recommend. Otherwise, you'll be working all day. But this tractor is slipping a little bit. You can see that that's... This is the small one. Potatoes are, I don't want to say they're difficult to plant, but it is a, you know, it requires some power. 
So I would say 60 horsepower. But then actually, the kind of cool thing with these potato planters is that now that we have that Swiss Alpine map, if you want to grow potatoes on that map, you could use your little electric ridge track tractor that has it, you know, electric horsepower. Uh, you could use that for doing potatoes. Uh, there's enough. That thing has enough horsepower to pull this, so you could use it. Now I would say once again, I kind of prefer to be more in the hundred horsepower range to do it, but it could. The ridge track could operate all the equipment, so it's pretty cool. The electric track. So we've got our potatoes planted, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the other planter, and we'll try that bigger one. And once we once I've done this run, I'll go upstairs and grab that. <laughs> just down below um, I'll let this guy finish off we'll grab another tractor and uh, let that one do the planting of the next set of rows so I'm gonna put him on his worker and I'll be right back all right so now that we know how the ridge system works I'm just gonna take this bigger one down but as you can see it doesn't really make much of a difference does it now this one's nice because it really does hold more potatoes. So let's go ahead and fill this up with potatoes. We'll fill it up with fertilizer. So we'll have half the field fertilized, the other half. Well, no, actually, it's just 500. Wow, they both hold 500. That's interesting. This one has such a much much bigger hopper, a much mooser. Bigger is better. All right, so we need to get uh, fertilizer. Fill that up. Put that in. So there's our fertilizer. And awkward. <laughs> but the weight on the front of the tractor is keeping it down. All right, I'll be back. All right, let's put this tractor to work. I'm going to start. I think, again, it, you don't turn it on. It just does it. So there we go. Yep. So these are going to be fertilized. I didn't go over far enough. There we go. I'm going to hire a worker and let him do the work. We can kind of just watch him do his, her thing. Don't ever make assumptions, right? <laughs> there is the lady who's doing the potato, the potato planting, and it's fertilized. Now this also is fertilized. Interesting. So we're not going to find the difference, but. I, uh, when we plowed the grass under, it made a fertilization level, so it's getting 100% fertilized, even though it's not. But that's a whole different story. That's for the, t if you're interested in fertilization and stuff like that, watch my tutorial on how to do crop care. That'll tell you everything you need to know about it. We're not going to go into that tonight. You can see the device working there as we continue to plant. So I'm going to go ahead and get this field done because this is all we really need to do with the planters. Uh, and I'll keep, I'm going to rotate tractors, get, let that guy go while I fill this guy up, and I'll just keep running back and forth. So, All right, I'll see you guys in just a minute when the field is completed. All right, one thing that I did miss that we need to catch up on here. Uh, this actually came with the pack, too. I was going through, I was going to try to build a shed to do this. And I found that they actually include, and this was not listed in the on the web page of things that are included. Maybe it is, but I didn't see it. Uh, a potato processing facility. Now, I don't know what this does. I, all I know is it's got 165. And there's some lights. That could be the electricity. There's a cooling potato cooling system. I don't know why you need to cool potatoes except for maybe to... Oh, you know what? Over, you know, to keep them from rotting. Where's the front? No, just slice. Yeah. You can even heat them up, too, if you want. Uh, yeah, big empty space. That's what I figured. And that's what we want. I was going to build something to put the potatoes in and, and process them into pallets, and here we go. This is what we're looking for. Now, the downside is this building costs, well, $195,000. So there's that is a pretty pricey facility. But it's a button on the door here. Ta-da! And once again, you can turn these lights on and off. Facility's dark. Turn them on. Now we got electricity. 
Weird that the switches are only on the outside and not on the inside, but that's how the game works. It would make more sense that this especially would be on the inside. But okay. Uh, but maybe because you're turning these lights on too by the doors. And they don't look like they have any light coming on, but they actually definitely have light coming from them, right? Yeah, they light up. So that's the potato processing facility, and we are going to use that. So I'll be back. So the moment that I was hoping for has arrived. We have some weeds on the field. We're going to try these weeders out. You'll notice I'm using these skinny tires to keep with row, religious row carefulness. Basically, what looks like what these do is they rip all the weeds out between the crops, leaving the row neatly row road. And then if you have, uh, you can also add wheels on, the, like, uh, I'll have to show you. I should have thought about that before I started recording. You can buy this with or without rollers that go behind the, at the very back of the unit. And the rollers just probably work to push the dirt back into mounds if it, any of it comes un unmounded. Right? Is that the right terminology? And if on this one you just put nose, once you get lined up, you just follow the the ridge and it'll keep your wheels in the ridge. I've got this one, I've got the middle middle size one that we'll test out next. And then the biggie. The more biggie. Whoa. I think it went I think it bounced back there. Do you see that? Did it get did it miss a spot? Yep it did. Something made it bounce here and it missed a spot. The world's toughest weeds. So I'll be right back. I'll grab that other one, and we'll grab the middle size one, and you can see that in use. Then we'll use the big one. And you can see here I've got the tractors lined up ready for harvesting. We'll put all those good little things to use. And I've set up some conveyor belts within the factory the driver the drivable conveyor belt thing I still have not figured out I can't get it to hitch to the other conveyor belt it could be just something that I haven't have missed in real life the guy sits there and drives it around and it it stays attached to your conveyor belt system but I I can't figure out how to do that in the game and I don't know that it's necessarily even possible in the game but we'll see so I'll be back you can see on this one here, the wheels. See that? That's what I was talking about. You can see them spinning right there. Those probably push the dirt back into rows as you pass over. Both this one and the small one can have those added. I believe the big one just has those by default. So, anyway, I'll be back. All right, we've arrived. Let's go ahead and put this guy to use. Shove that one out of the way. You see here the idea is to get the other one stuck and drag it along with us. This is not working. Okay. Everything is going to plan. There we go. And we'll just keep our nose going down this route. See there, there. Those things are meant to hill those. They're a little bit off kilter with the game graphics, though. But still a neat idea, and that's how they work. So you can see this one do its job. So once again, it looks like it just rips the weeds out from between the potatoes. I don't know in real life if it, it doesn't look like it touches the mound. So that's probably a good thing, but... Maybe in real life it just it leaves weeds that are on the mound and kills the rest of them. And last, last but not least, let's grab the big one. These all do the same thing pretty much. But as I thought, in, you know, as I played the game, I'm like, there has to be a different... Like, potatoes and sugar beets probably use a different... I bet you I wonder if these could use the sugar beet rows. 
be interesting to figure that out. Like, I don't, eh, I guess sugar beets grow a little differently, though. They don't really have the, the rows that these have, so. I don't know. If I remember, the sugar beets grow in a uh, standard looking field. They don't, they don't have the hilling like this does. Once again, keep your nose on that. This track is a little harder because it doesn't have a marker. Stay this straight. And so that's the idea of the weeder. I'm going to go ahead and get this field weeded the rest of the way, and I will catch back up with you in a moment. All right, the potatoes have grown. We're going to I'm going to show you the first setup here. This is probably the most the most fastest. I've got the cutter on the front, and I've got the collector on the back. Violet, God bless you. She brought me some tea. This is taking me all day to do this video, by the way, guys. Hopefully you enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed making it not. Oh, wow. Can I windrow these? So the mistake I made was the cutter is too wide, so I'm not getting all the potatoes. We're going to have to go back and forth down these rows with the potato collector. But I just wanted to demonstrate that you could. You don't have to, but you could. And I did. But it's not. We're definitely not pulling all the potatoes out. So that's really cool, though. All right. So let's go ahead, and we're going to drop this guy off there. And I'm going to go ahead and hire a worker to finish up the field cutting, and we'll go ahead and play with the other collectors while we're doing that. Workers off, doing crazy stuff. Is this harvested? Growth harvested. Oh, it did. Oh, no, it actually did pull. Looks like these are all showing harvested here. So that's good, actually. I wanted to see something, though, real quick. I want to grab this guy. And it's going to get stuck. Look out. Look out. So I'm going to pull that back down and see if we pull any more potatoes out. It's basically a two-row puller. No, nope, it did. It pulled them all out. Okay, because you can see the stalks. Where the ones haven't been pulled out, you can see the stalks. So those, all the potatoes are out of the ground here. At least mostly. So I wanted to thank Giants once again for uh, letting me have a copy of this. Oh, no, there's still more. Yeah, see, that's what I was afraid of. There's little bits more. Not a lot more, but little bits. So is it worth it? Okay, so we'll lift that up. I'm not going to make a mess, but that's how that works. So if you want to really dig the potatoes out, you want to make sure you go down each row, like double road. So then we have our next device, and this is our potato uh, windrower model. It doesn't just dump them out the back. It actually windrows them to the... I have this one set to the left. You can set either left or right. Now, the downside is because I have it set to the left, it's, I'm going to have to go down and start on the other end of the field. But you'll see this windrows... Instead of doing one grab, it'll win windrow two grabs into one section. I don't know if that thing stretches out or how that works. Let's see if we have any instructions here. Lower swather. Uh, anything else? We're going to turn it on. Yep. And we're going to lower. You can see it dumping off to the left. So
So the S in the 200, you got a WH200 and a W200, a WH200S, and the S stands for Swather. And I've got my little 105 horsepower tractor pulling these out, so it's pretty cool. We did miss a couple there. That's all right. Now the downside is, okay, maybe that didn't work the way I wanted it to work because it's put them onto the piles of the other potatoes. Uh, but we'll do this. Nope, that's not how it's going to work. So we don't do it that way. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still learning a little bit on this. Uh, I think what we need to do, and that made a mess. So what we need to do is just go one row over, like so. And dump them back. There we go. That's what we wanted to do, is to make a nice pile centrally between where we were and where we've been and where we're going. And that seems to be working the way that I want it to. So now, once you have the potatoes on the ground like this, you can come along with a telehandler and a bucket or tractor and a bucket and scoop them up and load them into a tipper by hand. That would take an awful long time. Or you can use our device that we bought over there. It's expensive, though. Once again, it's 80000 bucks or 90000 and it requires, I think, 90 horsepower. So it's not cheap, but it's still cheaper than a lot of the potato harvesters. The big ones, like I'm talking about, like the, the, the Textron or whatever they call it which is the large potato harvester. These are affordable. From inside the tractor, you can see a little bit more clearly the pile of potatoes that we've left behind. Now, with the next swat, the next collector that we have, you can see we're mowing the field. Not really mowing. We're cutting the field um, ahead of the tractor. We're going to park this one here, though. Now, just let me put this one to use. This guy has one that actually cuts while you collect. So we don't need to have the field cut. We can put this guy down at the other end. And we're going to dig into the uncut plant, and you'll see what I'm talking about. This one actually cuts for you, so you don't have to use that cutter. Let's see here. Same deal. Works pretty quickly, too. I'm shocked at how fast we're moving. Ah, I missed a row. Shoot. And more I missed. These are narrow pieces of equipment. That's why they use low horsepower. Though this one does require, I believe, 150 horsepower. So you need to have the tractor that we have right now is a Star 180. Uh, actually, this might be the 150. Yeah, it's 180. I don't think they had the 150 in this game. We had a, you used to have a 150 and a 180. The 150 had a silver grill. You can just keep it on a center line there and stay straight. It'll keep pulling them out. So I'm going to go ahead and hire a worker and let that guy finish his work. And we're going to pull, once this guy's done with that cut, we're going to pull him off the field. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if we can hire a worker with that other cutter or with the other collector. Let's see. Oh, 
How convenient. It took me right to the tractor I wanted. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hire a worker, and we'll see how they do. Yep. And there she goes. Or he, whoever, whoever's in charge. So that's kind of nice. We can hire a worker and just let our cares be taken away as they finish harvesting those potatoes. We'll let these guys work. And I'm going to come over here and collect the potatoes. With our potato collector. And then we're going to deliver them to our potato facility with our, with our potato wagon. My dog is barking. I don't know why. We'll unfold this thing. Now I'd say out of the three of these harvesters, I kind of like the one that we're using right now with the left dump off because it actually makes the widest swath um, or swathe, whatever they call it, uh, because it's not... Um, then you have everything collected at once instead of having to keep going back and forth. So hold on a second. So this, this is the collector wagon, and we're going to go ahead and put this to use. You can see it pulling the potatoes up off the field. It's like a vacuum cleaner, a giant tater vacuum. I don't know why it needs to have all these belts and systems. I would imagine there's probably some kind of cleaning going on there, like where they're washing the potatoes or rinsing them as they come out of the ground. I don't know. I don't know why it has to have so many belts, but it does. You can see it filling right up. So once again, one of the things I like about uh, this DLC is that... <laughs> Get out of my way. Is that we have a full system of equipment, and I like that. I like when they, they put out like a DLC that has like either a bunch of stuff that we don't have or didn't have, like lots of little implements or lots of big in implements that we didn't have before, or... Something like this where we have a, a play system where you have a bunch of little uh, farming toys that we can, you know, use as a, uh, like, use for our uh, for our farms. And that, that I, I enjoy that. Like, this is a, a whole sl selection or system of, of uh, harvesting for potatoes. It's not just, like, one piece of equipment. we got lots of different stuff that all makes one kind of fun harvesting system for potatoes. If, if potatoes could indeed be fun. Um, this would be the solution. So I love the animations. Like there's a lot of cool, a lot of cool things going on here. Yeah, see, like it's pulling dirt out or some kind of potato husks are coming out as we do it, and that just filled up. Um, so it's cleaning up after itself, which is pretty neat. And that's done harvesting. So we're gonna go ahead and let, put the pipe out. I haven't figured out. I don't think you can move the pipe up and down like on some of the other ones, but it just goes up. However, the good news is it's tall enough that it gets above the uh, trailer. Let's go ahead and fill this thing up. Specialized potato wagons. So once again, you can see here the difference. That device, though it does work faster, you kind of you get rid of one step, but you pick up another step, which is having to run this thing back and forth more often with that one than you do with this one. This one makes a nice, nice neat swath, but or swathe. But you have to make sure you overlap because you can see that first one I didn't overlap, and you can see here I've I've actually missed a bunch of potatoes on the field. So I don't know. It's going to be a a learning experience getting this all right. But I'm sure after some trial and error, we'll get it going perfectly. We'll 
We'll get one more load here, and then we'll take the trailer up to the, our facility, and we'll try out that equipment. So you've seen pretty much everything working here. Now, once again, you can actually get a, a version of this trailer with a cover over the top that has like a, a canvas or a, yeah, like a canvas or like a tarpaulin that goes over the top that's yellow uh, that covers up all the belts and stuff. So I suppose if you go out to harvest in the rain, you could do that. I don't know why you'd want to have that covered, but I guess maybe they want to keep it. I don't know. I don't know why you'd want to cover it, honestly. And there we go. We picked up another 6,800 liters of potatoes. So let's go ahead and put this in the trailer, and then we'll take this cool trailer and run it up. We got a larger one, too. I tried to move the larger trailer with my 100 horsepower armor track, and it couldn't do it. <laughs> so be aware that these trailers take some horsepower to move, almost more than some of the equipment. Oh my gosh, my wife's rushing me. I'm trying, I'm trying. Let these, we'll let these guys continue to work down here. But I think we've seen what we need to see as far as like how the harvesters work and how the pickup unit works. And we got a 71% full of trailer of taters. Now, personally, I'm going to show you how I have this set up. Back up at the factory, because you're going to deliver potatoes faster than you can palletize them. Um, so I would suggest dumping them in a pile, but and then using a, a conveyor belt and a front loader or whatever to get them turned into pallets. This is where multiplayer would come in. Uh, this is so complicated with all the different tractors running different stuff. Like you really could do a cool potato farm as a multiplayer session because you could have several people doing different tasks. Um, so I think that that has some potential there for guys that like to do multiplay. You know, one person, two, one or two people could run on the facility. You know, somebody, you know, collect bringing the potatoes in and then somebody organizing the potatoes and getting them. And then somebody putting them into the pallet machine and taking and moving the pallets off onto a truck. You could have quite a, uh, an assembly line going there. So uh, I do see the potential there for some serious, like, multiplayer gameplay. Uh, I'll show you how I set this up, and then I'm going to move it and mess it all up because I'm going to do it the way that I want to do it. Yeah, I know that was realistic. Um, we have, I've set this up. What I would imagine you do is, you know, make this. Wow, what is that horrible sound? Um, you make this where you dump your potatoes, and then they would load onto your conveyor belt and, you know, come back into here where they turn into pallets. So one person could be over here shoveling them over to where this is or driving this back and forth. And this is the thing I was telling you about. Oh, that's that. Weird noise. Okay. This doesn't, as soon as you move it, it disconnects from the other. And I could not get it to physically connect to that belt. So I don't, it's cool looking and stuff, but I don't see what the usage is of this. I don't, it's not going to be super valuable to us. Um. But this other stuff is pretty cool. So we're going to move this out of the way. So if someone else has an idea how that 512 is supposed to work and actually has it working well, I'd like to see that. But for now, I do, it doesn't seem like it's like super practical to use, aside from you move it a little bit and then stop using it and let the physics take over. Now, this trailer has a uh, cover. That's I put the cover on if you guys saw it. And then it also has a conveyor belt bottom that comes out the back, and you've seen that. So we're going to use that to dump this into our palletizer. If I don't hit the factory door. Or, sorry, neighbor. My neighbors are going to be angry. Actually, this is my field. <laughs> I just killed all my sugar beets. Now, I had to use a forklift to move these uh, devices in here, uh, those other two 
The palletizer and this bin both required a uh, forklift to move. But you can use the forklift to move it, and that'll, that'll get you settled. But I did have to do that. So I'm going to pull back here, and we're going to see what we're doing from the rear end. And we're going to pull this over here and load that over. That looks safe. Uh, whoops. <laughs> it's not quite what I wanted to do. Try again. Okay, and I want to see, is there any special things that we need to do? Close cover, open cover, honk. Detach, toggle cruise, close cover, force dump. I can't unload it. What? So my theory did not work. Stop. Okay. That didn't work. I see how that's cool how it does that, but now we've made a mess. But anyway, you get the idea. We're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna move that thing into place. So let's do this then if that doesn't work. That is some serious braking. It's like... <laughs> Let's see what happens. Get that out of the way. I want to make this work. Okay, so we're going to dump those here. The moving bottom is going to suck all the potatoes out and load it here. And while that's happening, we're going to jump back onto this machine. And we're going to start sucking potatoes, which is what button? B. There we go. There they go, and they're getting palletized. Look at how look at how fast that fills up. You're never gonna keep up. And it makes two at a time, and so that's our pallets, and then you just load those off onto a semi truck or a flatbed truck. Um, I'd say a semi would be cooler, you know. Get one of those semi trailers and use a forklift to load like a ramp and a forklift to load them in but that's the idea right there i've made a big mess but that's okay is this thing empty or is it still got nope that's it so all the potatoes are out so that's how that works um and then you just load them off and so wow this thing's horrible sounding wow okay so that is that so ladies and gentlemen hopefully you enjoyed the video as we took it from from field to carton. <laughs> and we got our potatoes into the cartons, and that's pretty cool stuff. And later on, we'll come back with a forklift and pull these out and put them on a truck and sell them. But the, or you can store them for your piggies. But that's cool. And they're much bigger than, uh, than I thought they were going to be. The ones that we get uh, off of the uh, smaller Grimmy palletizer for the sugar beets, um, it's small. You can't do, and you can't do potatoes with it. You can only do sugar beets. So this one's nice because we now can do potatoes in an organized fashion instead of a giant pile. Uh, so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed this review slash, well, first look. And uh, I appreciate you guys coming tonight, and I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Be sure to subscribe, and thumbs up always will help. Bye.